So my name is Phil. I was up here last night uh -huh. doing the, the crab walk up and down. <laughs> so uh, please forgive me for that. Uh, but I work for Christians in Sport okay. in Northern Ireland. Mm -hmm. And uh, I play rugby, Grace. Yeah. I try to play rugby, I'm quite injury prone, so my, my game time at the minute isn't unbelievable. Yeah. But when I am fit, I love rugby. And I play for Ballymena Rugby Club. Okay. Up north, there's a couple of guys here from Ballymena, not Oster out of the club yet. Yeah. I am a big Ulster man, I must oh, say. Yeah. Always standing up for the Ulster men. Wants to be Ulster. Oh, I know, I know. But here, all the play, I mean, it's serious high standard here in Ireland, isn't it? Ireland going in the World Cup, it's going to be an unbelievable year. I have the feeling already. Yeah. Very but Grace, we could chat about Irish rugby all morning, we but could. we're not going to do that, no, are we? We're not. No, because as you just said, we have our theme. We're going to be in Mark's Gospel, or we are in Mark's Gospel. Last night, Alan was sharing with us who who do you say I am? But Grace, this morning we're going to be looking at is Jesus worth following? So mm -hmm. why don't you read from us if from Mark and if there's uh, the young people have their packs, get Mark open at chapter one. Just page six and seven, guys. Page six and seven, very helpful, Grace. So yeah, um, Mark chapter 1 verse 9, um, the, the baptism and testing of Jesus. So at that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptised by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son whom I love, with you I am well pleased. And then verse 14. After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. As Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets, their nets and followed him. When he had gone a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John in a boat, preparing their nets. Without delay he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with hired men and followed him. Brilliant. So yes, the question we're asking this morning, is Jesus worth following? But when I say that we're following, Grace, what's, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? First thing that comes to my mind is social media, Instagram, yep. Twitter. Followers, yeah. following. Anyone else get that when you hear the word followers and following? Mm -hmm. Yeah, a couple of nods. Grace, 30 seconds. And for 30 seconds with the person next to you, I want you to discuss who is the one sports person that you should follow on social media, okay? Who's the one person? A couple of reasons why. 30 seconds, and then Grace is going to share who she thinks, okay? Discuss. Say again. Oh, this one here is quite broke. Uh, this, this one is a bit that broke. It's saying it's fine today. Okay, there's your 30 seconds up, Grace. 30 seconds up. Tell all the young people here. I know we can talk about rugby for ages, but actually. One of my favourite people to follow on Instagram particularly is actually Keen Healy. So he's Keen Healy. Nice. Everyone here know Keen Healy? Yeah, a couple of Church, nods. Yeah. The reason why I actually really like following him is one, yes, because he is a great sports person. He you know competes at a very high level. Yeah. But also he's another side and he actually is really interested in kind of crafts and at the moment he, he does kind of handmade knives and stuff like that and he does kind of wood carving. And it's really cool actually that he shares that on social media and it's just you know it makes him just seem more like a real person really. There you go, Keen Healy. See the two reasons there why you follow him, Grace. You said because of who he is, Kane Healy, what a player. Lions test player. Unbelievable Ireland veteran. And because of what he offers. Because he doesn't, he's not just Kane Healy. He's going to show you a different side of him. He's going to show you what he gets up to. He offers this knife crafting business of all things. He is worth following because of those two things because of who he is and because of what he offers. And this morning, Grace, I want to take those two things, and we're going to be looking at those two questions, or two kind of aspects, and applying them to Jesus. So we're looking at who is Jesus, and what does Jesus offer? And then at the end, we'll see, is he worth following? So here we go, who is Jesus? Do you know, in the passage that you just read, Grace, we get a headline or a declaration of who Jesus is right off the bat. We don't need to look for, for any clues at all. Grace, why don't you read us, out, read us out there in verse 11? So verse 11 
And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, whom, whom I love, with you I am well pleased. Here we go. Straight off the bat, we get this statement, this declaration of who Jesus is. But notice something here. This isn't Jesus talking about himself, is it? This isn't Jesus' bio or his, he's not blowing his own trumpet. Someone is making this declaration about him. And it comes from someone real important, Grace. Someone with real authority throughout life. And Grace, in sport as well and in life, it really does matter about what people say about us, doesn't it? So, I mean, think of it this way, okay? Say I am playing for Balomena, I'm back home, I've had a game, I've managed to play the full 80 minutes for the first time in ages. I've walked off the pitch, and lo and behold, my mum comes up, she's been watching the game, and she comes to me and says, Phil, you played amazing. She'd probably call me honey, give me a wee hug, and I'd be like, Ooh, okay, thanks, mum. But you know, Grace, I would be, I think, a w- uh, not a wee bit, very misguided to actually think I've played amazing every time my mum tells me. And I, don't get me wrong, I don't want to sound really harsh here, my mum. I love it when she comes and watch, watches my games, but she doesn't really know loads about rugby. And I know you may be like, oh, Phil, don't be, don't be harsh, but like, she's never coached before, she's never played the game. She knows the rules a bit, but if she comes and tells me I've had an amazing game, I'm, I'm not really going to think I've played that amazing. Even if I came off, I'd missed every tackle through, every line out not straight, my mum would be like, ah, Phil, you were, you were great. But let's say the same game. I walk on past my mum, Joe Schmidt, comes running towards me. Now, Joe Schmidt, if you don't know, he's the head coach of the Irish rugby team. Serious good coach. And he comes over to me and he says, Phil, you were amazing. Grace, let me tell you, I would be absolutely buzzing. Joe Schmidt, one of the best coaches in the whole world, top of the game, has came and said, Phil, you were amazing. Well, you know what? He is a man with authority. He is a man who knows exactly what it takes to have high standards in rugby. And if he's going to come and say, Phil, you played amazing, then I can be rest assured that what he said is true. I can be proud and think, you know what? I must have had a pretty decent game here. And you know, in this passage that we've just read, we get this declaration, as we said, from someone in authority, and we get a couple of glimpses of who that person is. Look at verse 10. Just as Jesus was coming out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open. The Spirit descending on him, verse 11, and a voice from heaven. You see who this person is who's making this declaration about Jesus? This person is God. The one who's making this declaration about Jesus is God himself. And do you know, God has immense authority. Because the Bible tells us that God is the creator of all things. Alan shared with us last night. He is the one who holds the universe together. He has sustained everything that has ever been made, ever and always will. He is supreme authority over everything in this universe. And you know, because he is God, what he says about Jesus really, really matters. And here in this historical account of Jesus' life, we get to hear exactly what the one with supreme authority says about Jesus. And you know, just like how I would grip to every single word and just how you would grip to every single word that an international scout or an international coach would say about your sport, so we should grip to every single word that God says here about Jesus. And here's what he says. You are my son, whom I love. With you, I am well pleased. Grace, three big things there. Point them out for us. What are the three big things that God says about Jesus? First one says that God says that Jesus is his son, so it's God's mm-hmm. son. Second one is whom I love, so God loves Jesus. And the third one is with you I am well pleased. So God is really well pleased with Jesus. Absolutely. And we're going to break those down in just a sec. So let's look at the first one. Jesus is God's son. Grace, you all have parents. Mm-hmm. We've all had parents. You're the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Tuttle. Mm-hmm. Now tell me, have you ever been told that you look like any of your parents? More sound like them, actually. Oh, there you go. Yes, well, you know, I get told I'm like my dad quite a bit. If we skip on here, there we go. There's the lads. There's my dad there on the left, just in case you're wondering. There's me on the right. My little sister, who's who's here, Jessica, she's also a sibling, of course. She was gutted she wasn't in the photo, so you can look at her as well. But, you know, people tell me I look like my dad. I'm, I'm not really sure. Can anyone see it? 
maybe a bit, yeah. Some people can see it. Do you know, even if you can't see the physical similarities, I am like my dad, whether I like it or not. Do you know, because his genetics are as, as part of my makeup. His blood runs through my veins. See Sam Small there? I am his son. I am from Sam Small. I am his, that's who I am. But do you know, in God saying that Jesus is his son, this is truly incredible. Because Jesus doesn't just have the genetic makeup of, of a Jewish man 2,000 years ago. But Jesus actually is the son of God. Now remember who God is, Grace. God who is the supreme authority over everything in the world. The one who has created everything. Jesus is his son. And you know, Jesus is exceptionally like his father. Exceptionally like him. Remember the memory verse we sang last night? And we did last night and we danced to last night. Remember that line in it? God was pleased to have his fullness dwell in him. Grace, that is absolutely amazing, isn't it? The fullness of God dwells in Jesus. Here's what we're saying this morning. This is what Mark is saying. That Jesus is the fullness of God. He is God in the flesh. That's mad. But you know, as you'll see throughout this week, as we unpack Mark's gospel and we look at Jesus' life, we will see that Jesus was unlike any other man. You will see the extraordinary things that he did in his life and what he did through his death. And you know, I hope that all of us will see that he was not an ordinary man, but he was and is the Son of God. So that's the first thing we see about Jesus. Who is Jesus? The Son of God. Second thing, Grace, tell us, what's the rest of the verse say? So it's uh, whom I love. I think is the next thing. Yep. Who I, whom I love with you, I am well pleased. Remember who is speaking here about Jesus? It's God. And here God is giving his full affirmation for who Jesus is. He says, you are my son. I love you. With you, I am well pleased. And you know, that word well pleased, sometimes I read that and I'm like, someone told me I'm well pleased with you. I don't, I don't know how buzzing I'd be. But you know, we completely miss what God's actually saying here. Think of it like this. Think of your own sport. You know that player in your sport that you just cannot get enough of watching? You sit up all night watching highlights, video after highlights, video. Maybe in football, it's Cristiano Ronaldo, Messi. If it's rugby, it could be Brian O'Driscoll in the past. It could be Kieran McDonald in GAA. That player that when you watch, you're just like, ah, oh, they are unbelievable. They would be the first name on my team sheet every time an utter joy to watch. They make the game look class. And when you watch them, you are just like, ah, oh, they are amazing. Anybody get that feeling? We know those players. Do you know, Grace, I think that's just a snippet of what God thinks here when he looks at Jesus. Because he looks down at his son, he sees his life, he sees what he's came to offer and everything he does, and he is just filled with joy as he looks at his son. He is utterly satisfied looking at Jesus. He is just like, oh, you are amazing. You are my delight. I am well pleased with you. So who is Jesus, Grace? He's the Son of God. God loves him and he is well, well pleased with him. That's who Jesus is. So if that's who he is, Phil, what can he actually offer? Yeah, so that's the two things we're looking at. Who is Jesus? What does he offer? Here's what Jesus offers. Verse 14 and 15. Read it out for us there, Grace. After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. So here's Jesus, and he comes and he says, I'm offering you good news. Look down at your passage. What's the good news? The kingdom of God has come near. What on earth does that mean? Do you know, when Jesus here talks about the kingdom of God, Jesus is saying that he is bringing the kingdom of heaven. Jesus says, I am bringing heaven near. I'm bringing heaven to people. This is what Jesus offers. He brings his people heaven. And as we will see throughout the week, we will read and find out that Jesus is bringing heaven to his people through what he accomplished on earth, through what he did in his life. And how do we accept this offer? Mm -hmm. Jesus says, repent and believe the good news. So, Phil, you just told us that Jesus offers us heaven. Yes. yes, yep. And then the last thing you said was repent and believe. But what does that 
repent and believe actually means? Yeah, it's quite a funny word, isn't it? It's not one we use every day, repent and believe. Great question. But really what that word repent means is to just stop what you're doing. You're going one direction, and this word repent means to stop, turn around, and go in a completely different direction. And this is what Jesus is asking us to do. He's telling us to turn and go in a direction. And that direction, as we will see in verse 17, is to follow him. Look what Jesus says. If we go on next. Verse 17, Jesus says, Come and follow me. Come and follow me to put aside your own desires to live and make a name for yourself, which we do so often by nature. Jesus says, Put that aside and live for me. Come and follow me. And you know, when we look at verses 16 to 20 here, Grace, we see that Jesus makes this call, as he does to us today, he makes a call here to a particular couple of, couple of men. And we get to see the response. Because Jesus comes to these men and he says, follow me. And today Jesus says to us, come and follow me. And you know, in that moment, when Jesus comes to these men, and he, he makes this call to follow them, they have a choice to make. They have a choice. Is Jesus going to be worth following? Just like we have to make here today and this week and in our lives, is Jesus worth following? Do you know these men, they'd perhaps heard who Jesus was. They were maybe even there when God made this big declaration of who Jesus is. And they made that decision for themselves. Is Jesus worth following? And look what they did at the end of the passage. You see what they did? They stopped what they were doing and they left immediately to follow him. They left their hired men, they left their businesses, they were fishermen by trade, they left what they knew, and they followed Jesus. Why? Because they saw who Jesus was, they saw what he offered, and they said he is absolutely worth following. I wonder this week, as we unpack more and more about who Jesus is, more and more about what he can offer you, will you think he's worth following? And that's the question we want to ask. Who do we say Jesus is? And is he worth following? Grace, we as leaders think he's absolutely worth following. 100%. If your leaders are leading in your team and everyone who's here from Christian Sport this week, they think he's absolutely worth following. And so let we pray, and I'll pray now, that we too will see that Jesus is worth following. I'll pray. Lord, thank you so much for a brand new day that you've given us. God, thank you for everything we've been able to do so far. And God, thank you for who you are and what you offer us. God, thank you that you came and you were the fullness of God in person. God, help us to see who you are throughout this week as we unpack more about your life. God, help us to understand this offer that you give us. And Lord, help us to see that you are absolutely worth following. And we ask this in your name. Amen.